Hey everyone, my name is Maddie. Today I want to share a quick Keisha tutorial on how to create some beautiful ripply wave-like caustics in a room setting. We'll see how the light reflects uh, with the glass to create these kind of reflections and how to best optimize your render for caustics. Okay, so I recently created this room render and um, I really liked how the hanging light here was uh, creating this nice shadow against the wall. Um, and, you know, it's, it, I used just an HDR and, you know, there was this nice natural lighting coming here. So I, I thought, why not take that to the next level and create some interesting caustics uh, from a hanging lamp. So here's some inspiration uh, that I collected. And I really like the look of this lamp and just that distorted effect that's creating these ripples um, that scatter across the room. So I uh, just referenced that and uh, tried out a couple of tests. Um, and yeah, this was the final look that I had. Um, and uh, here, you know, I just played around with some color and I really liked how that was looking. But I noticed that the, the lights were just hanging a bit too low and, you know, somebody might bump their head if they were sitting here. So just rearranged the room and yeah, so this was the final outcome. So let's go into Keyshot and see how uh, this can be made. Okay, so first um, I have all the light sources uh, turned off. Uh, here's the scene that I have set up. Um, so I, I started off uh, uh, creating an HDR, uh, I mean adding an HDR image. Uh, into the scene so that's creating some of that nice natural lighting um, and you know you can see it's it's much brighter here on the right side and uh, uh, we've got the shadows here where the uh, the lamps are so that way you know we get some good contrast uh, uh, with those those ripples uh, coming in here and uh, okay now I'm gonna go into the glass material and I used a uh, dielectric for this. So you could also use glass, but dielectric just has um, a lot more settings that you can play around with here. Um, so you can get the desired look that you want. Um, so usually the refractive index of glass is 1.5, but I went with um, 1.66, which apparently is flint glass, as you can see it says here. Um, and uh, diamonds is 2.4. So flint glass is, uh, I think it's a bit thicker. Um, so that can help um, create those kind of sharp contrasted uh, waves that come in. Um, yeah, and then I added a, um, a bump uh, map. So this kind of marbled ridge look that you can see here, those lines. So that just, you know, gives it more of an interesting look, but it's not absolutely necessary. Uh, but yeah, you could you can add um, any kind of uh, bumps and distortions to your lamp to create different effects. Okay, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on the lights. So there's this one and that. Okay, so if I go into that. Uh, so I just use a simple area light for this um, and I went with 500 lumen um, so that just um, you know that that looked bright enough and it, it you know helped with that that scattering the light scattering across the wall um, and I just uh, give it kind of a warm tinge okay I also um, added a uh, like a slightly frosted glass material to the to the bulb that's inside so that it's not um, super sharp over here and kind of get that glowing effect uh, around the, uh, the filament of the light. Um, okay, so now uh, we don't see those, those ripples appearing. So what we have to do is go into lighting and we have to turn on caustics. So that's the only way that you can actually see those caustics appear. So um, so that's important to turn on and also adjust your global illumination and ray bounces. 
So the global illumination helps to create like those soft shadows. Um, it just helps to distribute the light uh, across the room. And ray bounces helps to uh, give a more uh, realistic look to the, to the glass. So the higher those are, the better the image looks. But um, it can also really slow down the render time. So, um, so I feel like keeping it at a 10, keeping global illumination at a 10 and keep, keeping ray bounces at 30 um, um, didn't uh, uh, slow down render time too much. So that's kind of a good amount. Um, I also turned off global illumination and self shadows uh, just because um, since the lights are hanging up here, you don't see its effect on the ground that much. So we don't really need those two things. Uh, and then rendering technique interior modes. So this is an interior scene. Uh, and just I just turned on smooth global illumination. OK, um, and then just to uh, kind of make the image look um, a little more smooth and uh, and just uh, nice. Um, I just did a couple of adjustments uh, in post. So um, went to image and uh, added, <clears throat> uh, chose photographic, uh, added, uh, you know, some, some contrast over there because the image was looking a little dull, uh, but having some nice contrast can just, you know, sharpen things up. And, um, and then I, uh, denoise is, you know, quite necessary, but you don't want to go overboard with this. So I felt like uh, 0.6 for denoise and the uh, and fire five filter, you know, that's to kind of get rid of these, uh, these little stars you see around here. <laughs> um, so I feel like keeping that at, at a halfway point is good so that you don't lose a lot of that detail because it's, it's blurring those out after all. So um yeah that's about good and uh and then bloom so that you just kind of get some of that softness here with the the filament inside the bulb uh inside the lights and then i added a slight big net uh sorry vignette big vignette yeah okay whatever <laughs> just to you know just make the image pop a bit more uh vignette I think it's been yet. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And yeah, that was the, the final image that I got. So yeah, so I just hope that was helpful. And um, yeah, it's just all about, uh, you know, trial and error, testing out different things and, and seeing what's uh, what looks most realistic and, um, you know, achieves that look that you want. So uh, thank you.